So today I'm harvesting some of our little radishes here. We've got lots of them and we've been gradually picking our radishes just to kind of thin them but also just to be able to eat them. So we just go ahead and pick them out nice. They're really beautiful and these ones are a little spicy. I don't remember the name so if it comes to me while editing this video I'll put it at the bottom or in the description. But yes, they're gorgeous beets. And then the tops are given to Prancer, our little bunny, and then whatever he doesn't eat will go into our compost bin. Look how beautiful these are. Now these ones here that I don't see any on top of yet, I let those just keep going. So I'm really just pulling the ones that are kind of bubbling at the surface right now and the ones that look a little larger. So like right over here. So right over here we've got a lot of them but this one's still pretty small and then we've got a large one here. So I usually just take out that large one and leave the little ones because they'll still get a little bit more growth yet. And I come and check over here, which we've got quite a few over here. So we're going to take the largest ones. There we go. And then it gives the littler ones a little more room to grow and a little bit more time to... There. Look how beautiful! So now we're a week later and I'm going through the rest of the little radishes here. And we're going to kind of clean this all up. We're harvesting and then we're also getting rid of some that have really big holes in them because we know that there's worms in them and I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Radishes with holes like this will have the worm in them. Trust me, I've already broken a few open and there's a little white worm. So last week when I harvested the larger ones, I left the smaller ones just to gain a little bit more size and they did, but I ended up with some worms. So next year, I now learned my lesson. Um, I'll use the Monterey BT, which is an organic spray option. When I go through and do that first little harvest, I'll spray that on the, on the radishes. And then um, this should usually help. I use that on my uh, cabbages. I use that on my kales. Whenever you start seeing those white moths come in, and yeah, they're beautiful, uh, but they're laying those eggs and those worms feed off of a lot of your crops to be able to turn into the moths. So um, that's what I would suggest, that's what we use, that's what I love using. So as most of you know, we do have a little bunny and his name is Prancer and he loves the radish tops. He even actually likes the radishes, but they have a little bit of a, a spicy kick. So I get a little worried about that for him, <laughs> even though Jason loves it. I do. And um, so we usually give the tops to him, but he's already had a lot of carrot tops today. So we try to, we try to kind of spread out his treats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our compost area. We're gonna show you that. And uh, I'm gonna put the uh, little radishes in there. And yeah, this is our first time using this, right? This is my second, Oh, your okay, first you got time. something in there, okay. Yeah. Sweet. So this year we're composting with the SubPod compost system. We're super excited to try this out and so far it's been working awesome. We've been able to not only just throw all of our gardening goods in one pile out in the back, we're now able to put it into a system and create some great food to feed our beds with throughout the season. We haven't been able to collect any of that uh, food for our beds yet, which is the compost, um, but we're, uh, we're in the beginning of our journey here, so I am super excited and I'll show you over here. So this is the SubPod system. It's really unique. You can sit on it as a chair, which I put it in this space where I seeded all of these beautiful wildflowers last year. This was kind of one of those spaces that was like a junk space of the garden. I know we all have those junk spaces. So I wanted to turn our, our junk area in the garden into something beautiful, but something that's useful. 
And so that's why I went ahead and did wildflowers because wildflowers, they're gonna come up early, they're gonna bloom early. There's different things that come and blossom at different times. We've already had that beautiful white baby's breath. It was pure white over here. And now we're starting to get other things. We're getting the mountain fresh blues mixed in there. We're getting some larkspur mixed in there. So now we're getting um, more bees, more butterflies, more ladybugs, more lace wings, all these beautiful things that we didn't usually get until the end of summer. But because we're creating little habitats throughout the garden now, we're bringing in those beneficials. So there's not as maintenance on ourselves for all of the bad bugs in the garden. They're starting to come in. They're feeding on the plants, they're pollinating our plants, they're eating the bad bugs. So we're getting that system going early on in the season. So that's what's so exciting about adding these beneficial areas into the garden space. And what better way and place to place them is around the compost systems. So with the sub pod system, you can get them placed into these raised beds that they provide, or you can just buy the sub pod system and create your own raised bed or put it in an existing raised bed already. Yeah. So or you, if you want to, you can actually just bury it right into the ground and just leave a little bit, you know. Yeah, you above, totally so. can, but yep. we want the easy route. Right, yep. <laughs> and you can sit on it and you can just enjoy the natural beauty around you, which is awesome. But let's get to the real stuff inside. So we also did plantings around and they show that a lot and that they're supposed to perform super well because there's so much aeration in the soil from all of the worms in here doing their job. So we're gonna see how that works out too and we'll share along the way, but let's see what's going on inside here. Mm. So all we're doing right now is when you first start out, you wanna add some cardboard and paper and then the worms and castings and then wet these little worm beds here. So these little worm mats are what you want to do because underneath there's probably not as many worms over here because I started feeding them on the so other see a side. Bunch of them though. So that's the bedding. Mm -hmm. And that's just you can take cardboard, paper, whatever. Yep. And then you wet down this there. down and you put that down and they start creating their house and you leave it for one week. And then you start adding stuff. So it's already been about a week and you want to start only feeding them on one side. So as you can see, there's worms here, there's worms on the actual um, food. Um, and when you add the scraps from your garden in here, you also wanna add some form of leaves, grass, paper, cardboard, other things intermixed. And then um, you wanna then cover it back over with that mat and also kind of give it a little water. What's awesome is there's feeding steps right on here. So you don't have to keep any messy papers around to make sure you're doing it right every time. And once you get the hang of it, then you're good. You obviously don't need the instructions then, but what a great reminder. And then it shows over here like what to add. And then there's a huge list on their website and I'm pretty sure it comes with the sub pod as well. But there's a huge list on their website of everything that you can add in there. And it's so many things, you guys, that we throw into our trash. So many things. So if you can start putting it into this bin instead of your trash can that gets put into a pile with everything else, how awesome would that be that you're able to start using half of your trash in here and feeding it to your garden? It is cool. I mean, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're finally this was one of the final steps for us in our garden to make it more complete, like a complete system. The next thing would be a rain barrel. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we, we're in a bad drought here in Wisconsin right now. We haven't had rain in forever. It's, it's so dry. Um, so I've been married to the gardens with water <laughs> right now. But I feel like our gardens are becoming more of a complete circle with using this system. and. What an easy system and there's no smell because of this system. So there's also an aerating tool that comes with it too. I don't have it over here right now, but every time you add, you're supposed to use this aerator thing and you just kind of twist and turn it in there before you lay the mat back in and then we're good. So yeah. I am so excited. Wait. Are you yeah, excited to I see? I am. It? It's going to be really cool to be able to, to come in here at some point, shovel it out and then spread it. Yeah. you know, on, on the garden. So what's so. really funny too is the kids. So Lana's seven, Sayla's five. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Killdeer. Those yep. are called killdeer. Yep. We must be near a nest. He doesn't want us here. Um, 
So the girls, they're learning how to compost now. So this is what's awesome too, is teaching the kids things that you're learning yourself. So I'm really learning more about the whole composting system. And so the other day I opened this up and laying in here was a plastic bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I go, I go, who did this? Sailor goes, I did, I'm composting. <laughs> So I really had to go into detail about what is able to be put in here, how yeah. it's put in there, and what is not to go in there. So I just thought that look that it. was so cute. Sayla, um, look at Once Sayla knows how to read fully, she'll be able to see no thanks plastic <laughs> bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, that's hilarious right. yeah. yeah so yeah. i thought that was a funny story but, that is um, that is this is what i'm excited about so we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna add my radishes and okay. um, we're gonna move on so normally when i add these i'd also add a little bit of um a little bit of paper with it and then aerate it but i'm gonna just throw them in for now and i'll come back and do that later and then add a little water onto the top of it too so and then I'll come back. Look at the worms are right there on the bottom of the mat, ready to just yep. go to town. And they're going to town on that mat yeah. too. They're creating their own little ecosystem in there. So there we go. There you go. All right. Where's my coffee? And, and how <laughs> cool is that? We're, uh, we're having work done yeah. while we're not doing anything. I we've, know. We've got our little worms doing their thing. <laughs> and what's really cute is I saw the girls over here the other day just sitting and Lana's like, oh, this is like a little secret garden space. I'm like, yes, that's what I want it to be. And once the prices of lumber come down, I want to add like a cute like little fence and a little like wooden arch. And I have a little name title for this um, garden. I'm going to call it the Garden of Gaia. So that way it's everything that's geared towards nature and the full completion and the full circle of having your own garden. Right. And one thing with Subpod 2 I want to say is that they have them even in smaller editions as well. So it can fit into any size garden that you have. So even if you have a smaller backyard garden, you can have a full complete circle garden and feed your gardens with you know your compost. So it's, it's available for anyone with any size yard. Jason's going to crack open a radish for you. Casey wanted to have me do it in my mouth, but <laughs> I had to do it. I in thought my mouth. this time I could maybe do it without that. Okay, let's see. So oh, that, so there's not a worm presently. But you can tell. Oh, look at there's a little black bug in there though. Okay. Yeah, see, there's always stuff in there. The worms make the holes, which create space for the other bugs. Yeah. But yeah, the other yeah, day I cracked it open, there was a little white worm in mine. Oh, right there. There it is, right there. Yep, that little white worm. Mm -hmm. I told you. <laughs> Good thing I didn't crack it open in my mouth. I wasn't Yuck. lying. I wasn't yeah. lying, hon. Yeah. Look at, he's like, you got rid of all my good radishes. <laughs> <laughs> so these cute little guys are called Salanovas. And so they're mini little lettuces, mini little lettuce heads. So they're pretty much, pretty much done. So we can cut these and eat these right now. And I'm actually really excited. I do want to get them off. They could go a little bit longer, but we've had really hot heat here in Wisconsin. It's really dry. And I seeded these in, um, I'd say the second week of April, which is um, an early time to start planting and seeding in Wisconsin. But that's around the time that, you know, you do peas and radishes and um, spinach greens and stuff like that. But it got hot really fast here. So mm -hmm. um, they're struggling a little bit and I'd rather eat them now than um, when there's tons of bugs or anything else that starts eating them. So we're gonna go ahead and just harvest these as well today. And then we're gonna clean up some of our spinach. Um, we thought we'd eat a lot more spinach this year, but we didn't. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually let a couple seed out and um, save those seeds, but I'm gonna clean up everything else. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the little spaces with extra herbs to fill in this herb garden. So this is normally our herb garden. So I figured if I started some greens early, we'd harvest them by the time we'd have to see or plant our herbs. And that's what we're going to do today.
So one or two of these I am going to save for the seeding out. Um, I want to save them so that way we can save some seeds. If I save some seeds, that, that starts saving us a little money. Last year I didn't save as many seeds. I was just so burnt out by the end of the season. I think a lot of you can relate. By the end of the season, you're just, you know, ready for, you know, apple spice lattes and pumpkins and all that stuff. You know, we kind of forget about the seed saving part. Um, so this year I'm going to go back to seed saving more, more varieties like I did the prior year. And that'll save us a lot of money with the next upcoming spring for seed ordering time. As you can see, that tiny, tiny little black bug right in the center there. Jason's trying to focus it in here. Is it in? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that little guy, I'll have to look up the name, but that little guy has been on a lot of my stuff. There's a lot of them and they fly away. They eat and they make little holes and everything. And not only have we had troubles with those guys this year, but also with thrip, just like any other year. Thrip is always the worst because it's super tall. Or <laughs> it's ginormous. No, it's actually, <laughs> They're monsters. It's monsters. actually the tiniest little thing ever. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost just as small as like a spider mite, um, maybe just a little bit more visual um, than a spider mite. But they are the most damaging and the most distressful to a lot of our plants. And when you see a few, just know that there's already thousands. So how do we take care of them? Well, you just have to know that you can't always get rid of all of them because um, there's no way. Once you see them, they're there and they're gonna always be there. But you do need some bad bugs to help feed those beneficial bugs to keep the system rolling in your garden. Um, so don't always expect a perfect garden. And that's why a lot of people use chemical sprays because they want this perfect garden. As soon as they see one bad bug, they're like, I gotta spray and everyone's going too spray crazy right now. Um, even though I do spray, uh, we keep it more organically, but a lot of people that do a lot of organic still aren't into the organic sprays. But hey, I'm maintaining around two acres of fresh food and flowers, so for me, I don't have time to sit around and pick and fidget and do all these little extra powders and things like that. So the sprays that I tend to use is Monterey brand. I love the Monterey, um, just the insect control. And then I'll also mix in some neem oil into that. Uh, I also mix in just some dish soap into there. The dish soap is just added, um, or clove soap I like, because it's a little bit less um, aggressive. But it helps the, the spray stick to the leaves of the plants. If you don't use uh, soap in there, it's just gonna kind of slide off, and then it's just kind of like you're, you're putting it on and then it's gone. Right. So, um, I, I like the Monterey, and then this year we've also been trying out one called Azera. That's A-Z-E-R-A, and that one seems a little bit stronger. And it does um, work for the thrips and the aphids very well, very, very well on aphids. So if you have a problem with aphids, that is definitely a go-to. We love Arbico Organics. They're a company that we use. We're not being paid for that. We're not affiliated but we do love um, their products. Yeah. Just to try to help you guys out as much as you can. But you know, we've, we've played around with diatomaceous earth in the greenhouse over the winter and everything, and it helps, but nothing gets things as well as like a spray. And with the diatomaceous earth too, you wanna be careful because wherever that is in the bees land, you're, the bees are picking that up on their feelers and their legs. And then with the sprays, as long as it's dry, as soon as it's dry, it's done. So that's why we always try to make sure to spray like really late in the day, like really late, like as soon as the sun's about to go down. So that way the good bugs aren't as active at that time. Um, but you know, no matter what you do, no matter what you use, you can't be perfect with it. And it, I just saw lots of thrips. The thrips are super tiny, so okay. So right now I'm just kind of pointing out where there's thrips. There's tons of them on this lettuce. So if we want to enjoy this lettuce. So we're gonna have to harvest this before it's completely grown. Um, it's supposed to be more kind of like a, um, this is like, it tastes like a butter lettuce, but it'll produce like a romaine. I can't remember the name of it. I randomly seeded a lot of things this year and didn't keep you know um, the names for it or anything but I think I'm gonna leave this larger one but then harvest 
the smaller ones so we can at least just enjoy some lettuce before it's just tore up by this thrip and anything else that may come along but there's a ton of thrip everywhere so i guess you know what i'm going to be doing tonight <laughs> i'll be spraying <laughs> on a saturday night so as i harvest the salanovas you can cut them just like you would a uh, head of lettuce um, where you leave the root in but i'm pulling them out because i'm going to be planting something else over here so some fresh herbs that we have growing in the greenhouse right now but if you left them in this would actually grow more lettuce for you and you can actually cut off the bottoms where the roots are and start growing them in a glass of water or replant them into a pot maybe in some grow lights in the house where it's cooler because now we're coming into our hot season so lettuces won't be doing as well unless we put a shade cloth um, over top of them but early spring later like fall early fall is a really great time to do the lettuce but right now it's starting to come to its end game for us um, but that's why growing in the house with a grow light near a air conditioning uh, vent would be perfect for them but uh, for now we're gonna call it the end of the season for them right now and uh, go ahead and move on there we go Freshly harvested. Yep. So I just cleaned them up and then I am going to soak them though too in really cold water and with a little bit of baking soda and a little bit of salt which will kind of kill any kind of bug in there and not let it sit for too long but just let it soak in there a little bit and then get it nice and rinsed and then we'll chop it up and have a nice little salad for today. <laughs> 